going to give because he wanted to talk about something that has been weighing heavily on his heart. With his speech entitled, Make America Great, parentheses, again, <laughs> Conda Allen, Make America Great, parentheses, again. <laughs> Well, it was the spring of 1960. Elvis was king. The hula hoop was the game that was what everybody did in my age group, what we played with. And the president was Dwight Eisenhower. Times were simpler then. They seemed simpler then. In the spring of that year, Eisenhower visited Hawaii, the brand new state of Hawaii. He flew into Honolulu in, an, in a motorcade with open cars, open convertible. He drove through Honolulu and the crowds cheered and waved at him. He was, it was exciting, it was fun. Then he drove across, his motorcade drove across to the other side of the island to Kanioe Marine Base where he was going to stay for the few days he was there. That was where I lived when I was a child. Now, I stood on a small knoll overlooking the road as it curved into where he was, Eisenhower was going to go. All the crowds were gone. They were back in Honolulu. On that knoll, I was standing with my brother, my mother, and maybe a dozen other children and their parents. It was just us and nobody else. When Eisenhower's motorcade came around the corner, he stood up, it was just a few of us up there, he stood up and waved at us in his traditional greeting with a great big smile and waved my little American flag in. That was, that was an amazing momentary experience. He turned the corner, went into the VIP residence where he was going to be staying for the days. And while he was there, my dad, who was the officer in charge of the officers club at the Marine base, was his official host. Very memorable experience. That fall was the election of 1960, and I remember seeing the, the Kennedy-Nixon debates on TV. I took an interest in politics, and I have been, an in have been interested in politics ever since. I am a news junkie, a politics junkie, American history junkie, especially the history of America, the American presidency. In 1968, when I was in college in Los Angeles, I canvassed for Eugene McCarthy, who was the Bernie Sanders of his day. <laughs> and that, a couple months later, during the same election, when I was in New York City, I remember finding out about the assassination of Robert Kennedy. Very tragic event. But some Excuse me. This, this is a spur of the moment speech here. Um, I have watched every election closely since then. Some with inspiration or exciting candidates, sometimes voting enthusiastically for the winner, sometimes being disappointed in my candidate losing. But all in all, experiencing and participating in the great American experience of American democracy. This election, however, in my eyes, is like no other in my lifetime, and perhaps many commentators say like no other since 1860. The two candidates, largely unpopular with the general public, with the general public, but they are, have small, very enthusiastic core constituencies. One candidate is a flawed human being, having, having made mistakes and some wrong decisions over a long public career. The other candidate, however, and this is my opinion, and I respect everyone's opinion, but this is something I have to say for myself. The other candidate, I, and I can't emphasize this enough, is temper, temperamentally unfit to be president of the United States. 
he is truly a danger to American democracy. While he is amazingly an, an amazingly successful self-promoter, I, I mean, after all, how did he get to where he is now? I do, that is something that uh, got him where he is. I don't have to remind you that he is incredibly selfish, he has an inability to empathize, he is thin-skinned, he cannot take criticism, he is a pathological liar, he lies through his teeth, he'll say one thing at the beginning of a speech and the opposite at the end of the speech if it serves his purposes. He is a failed businessman, questionable business tactics. Why, does he, why did he not release his taxes? Well, I don't think he's a billionaire. He probably has great debts. He is a womanizer, and I don't have to remind you about the Access Hollywood tape that came out, and that he's married three times, and an adulterer, and on and on. He demonizes his opponents, whether political or whether they're women. And he is incurious. He is uninterested in the nuances of politics or of the world affairs. His solutions to problems are too simplistic. Build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. There are more Mexicans going back to Mexico right now than coming this way. He wants to deport undocumented immigrants. That is not an easy way to solve the problem of, of the undocumented immigrants. He wants to exclude Muslims. He wants to throw out Obamacare and replace it with something terrific. And that's another <laughs> thing about him. He uses simple catchwords, but there's no substance behind those catchwords. He does not have solutions. He has said, in his acceptance speech at the Republican convention, I alone can fix this. What is his plan? There is no plan. His rallies are, if one were to look at his rallies, most of the people would be taken aback by the hate and fear mongering that he, that he encourages he, encourages, he has encouraged his followers to beat up the protesters. He promises to throw out his opponent in jail if he wins the election. Or he, refu he refuses to say whether he'll accept the results of the election if he loses. Are we a banana republic? <laughs> this is something you'd expect in a, in a small African country. He has received virtually no endorsements from major newspapers or magazines, except he has received endorsements from the KKK, the North Korean state media, and Vladimir Putin has said a lot of nice things about him. And the Russian media under Putin's control has said a lot of nice things about him too. Now, I have to admit, his opponent has failings. She has made mistakes in her past. Over a 30-year career of public service when she has tried very hard to do what she thought was right for the American public. We can agree or disagree with her, but she is true to her beliefs. Rather than demonizing her opponent, she her slogan is stronger together, and she focuses on bringing together people rather than set, spreading them apart. I realize and acknowledge that we're, we're all, by temperament, tribal in our beliefs and in our way we, pr we act. And we support our sports teams, and we support our political parties. But I try and overlook and vote for the best candidate regardless of the political party. And I trust we all want to do the same. America does not have to be great again because it is already great and will become greater still. America was great in the time of Eisenhower waving his 
arms from the car. But there were great challenges then that we overcame that I would not want to go back to. The great challenges of today can also be overcome with thoughtful, intelligent, and an informed voting public and leadership that reflects that public. Our future is in our hands. Mm -hmm.